Okay, so um, the very easy starter is, um, have you always wanted to work in the IT space? I did not, actually. I mean, going way back, I wanted to be a race car driver. That didn't work out. Um, but before I swapped into an IT career, I was actually a sports reporter for about seven years. I've been in IT for over a decade now, but uh, I was doing sports reporting in America. And uh, when my visa ran out, because I'm a Canadian, I had to make a decision, packed three suitcases, and moved myself to London, knowing nobody, stayed in a hostel and applied to jobs. And it just so happened that the first job I got was content writing for um, a telco in B2B, B2C, and wholesale. So I learned a lot very quickly, kind of fell backwards into it and never looked back. Okay. And in terms of from that initial um, foray, if you like, or joining the IT world, what are the steps you've had along the way to where you are today? Yeah, so it was great getting the opportunity to kind of see the different routes to market, which is what I do now, kind of run go-to-market organizations and sales and general management. Um, but as soon as I saw that, I, I took on a lot of tech and, and was able to become marketing and sales leader, um, running a team out of Dhaka in Dubai, uh, working in the Middle East and Africa a bit. And then from there, I kind of just got a specialty in voice. And, uh, and worked for a few different telcos and was actually a specialist for a while before I stepped into more business development and then into more general management within the IT space. Okay, and in terms of your sort of career path, I'd be interested because you say you were in sports reporting mm -hmm. for a little while first. So it'd be interesting to compare and contrast in terms of any challenges you might have experienced in, in that world and then in the IT world. Um, and as you know, the topic of the conversations, obviously, about women in IT, do you think any of the, the issues that you encountered were because of your gender or just what you might have encountered in your career anyway? Yeah, so that's really interesting. Both of my careers have been very male dominated. Um, and I think in both of them, as it pertains to gender, uh, sometimes you have to kind of prove yourself up front. So particularly when, um, you know, talking to men about sports you kind of get asked the question okay name all the teams then if you think you know so much about sports and it was very uh, similar when I was in tech and I'd walk in and a, a techie would ask me extremely technical questions to know if they wanted to even start to have a conversation with me up front that I can I can definitely say that when I would go to my engineers and say these are the questions I'm being asked they said no one else is being asked those questions but um, it did help me to be a lot more prepared um, in both careers and, and be ready for it. And I don't think anybody was doing it um, to be rude because I was a woman, but it was just someone knew that they were seeing and saying, oh, does this person actually know? Is it worth my time to be having a conversation at the level I need to be? Um, so that was definitely one challenge. Uh, another challenge that wouldn't be gender based. I think coming into IT, uh, particularly when you're switching mid-career, um, it's a very tight community. And people have a lot of experience going all the way back. I think there's a lot of value in knowing where you came from to where you're going. So kind of getting into that community and everybody had worked with the same organizations at some periods of time and breaking into that, um, regardless of gender, was kind. Of, it, it took a bit of time, but it was definitely worth it um, because it is a great community to be a part of. But it definitely was one of the initial challenges that you have to upskill yourself very quickly to be able to, you know, be seen on the same um same kind of point in time, whether it's to customers, to other people in the industry. And in terms of what you've seen over the, the years you've been working in the IT industry, have you seen the sort of diversity picture improve? And bear in mind what you said as well, it took a while for you to kind of you know, find your place and be accepted. Mm -hmm. do, do you think part of that is just because you've become more comfortable and know the industry? Or do you think there have been genuine sort of improvements despite your you know your now familiarity with you in terms of moving the dial on equality and, and diversity yeah definitely so I don't think it's all my charm that's gotten me <laughs> I think there's been a lot of initiative that is pushing not just for people who are in current roles within IT to get more diversity whether it's women or otherwise um, but also going into to schools and trying to get people to learn STEM from a younger age which I think is going to create real change um, I also think that, so even looking back, uh, my jobs before my teams were all male, I think I had one woman on it. And if I look at my team today, 
we're almost 50 50 but we actually have more women on my team than we have men and so that's just in terms of like anecdotal i definitely see more women involved um and i think it also is uh, becoming more diverse because of initiatives for hiring for promotion um, and for mentorship that is starting to make a difference which I, I obviously completely support because at current course and speed without those i don't think we'd be making changes in the time we really need to be that not just helps everybody but actually helps the industry go forward and just interested you say on your team there are more women than men mm -hmm. is that again how did that arrive was that a, a sort of organic process or was was there specific targets or you made sure at least to interview as many women as men for particular roles how, how did you end up with that with that sort yeah, of unusual so, balance shall we say yeah um so at nf1 there is a big um initiative to ensure that we have diversity across the organization and part of the hiring policy is try to ensure that we have a balance so not every candidate looks the exact same. So it's not necessarily a quota ticking exercise saying, okay, we need to be doing this, but it's ensuring that we don't start the interviewing process. And so we at least have candidates that aren't all, for instance, white males, not saying that you're not going to hire them, you're hiring who's best for the job, but ensuring that we are creating job specs that are using the right um, right language to ensure that we are not ruling people out by ensuring that we're uh, sharing our values on those JDs as well, uh, so that it can align with people who know that we are an inclusive work environment. Um, and also by trying to have multiple industry-wide diversity, um, you know, uh, webinars and events to, to show that this is a place that, uh, Again, not just women, but diversity of all kinds is, is welcomed. Okay, and in terms of um, sort of where we are, which is clearly an improvement on, on you know, 10, 20 years ago for sure, and where we perhaps need to, do, to, to get to, mm -hmm. any thoughts as to what else? You know, I mean, you reference STEM. A lot of people I've talked to say, obviously, getting uh, people early and trying to explain yeah. to them you know, the opportunities. But any other things you think? could be done to, to um, improve the uh, the equality, the di diversity uh, balance in, in the industry? Yeah, I think I've been so hugely benefited by being around people that have taken a personal interest, ensuring that I was able to progress at the rate that I have been able to. And I would address some of that too. I was able to be part of HIPO programs that gave me more exposure to more senior things so that I could you know, accelerate my career a lot faster. And it's not just because I'm a woman, but I do know that that was a part of it because I've worked for organizations that were trying to um, reestablish a balance or create a balance rather in, in organizations. And one thing I see a lot of organizations do is create mentorship programs, um, which I was a part of the 30% club, which is fantastic. But what really gets you ahead is to have sponsorship. So I've had wonderful sponsors, men and women in my career that are in high places that don't just mentor, but will be the person who is your voice when you're not in the room that want to put you in that seat, who talk well about you to give you those opportunities. Um, and I think a lot of people are given uh, advice to just find mentors and, and continue there, but it's really one to seek out sponsors for people, but for those people in high positions to actually act as sponsors and to actively think about how they can be creating that change beyond just a mentorship. And just in terms of this, the sponsorship, how how does that work? I mean, do, you, do does a, the company culture say, right, we are going to sponsor key individuals, whether that's you know whatever diversity I'm looking at, or do you say to your boss or you know someone higher up, you know, I want someone to sponsor and look out for me? How, how does you know how does that work for an individual? Yeah, in practice, so I think a lot of mentorship programs are created by the company, um, but that almost seems like since it's created in that manner, it, it only sits as that. In sponsorship, I think it's a lot more of an organic relationship, but being sure to ask for what you want and being very crystal clear in what your goals are with those, maybe they were mentors, but trying to be ensure that you voice to them that these are my goals and if there are ways that you can help me and you could speak to me and do you know things, having more of a, a tactical conversation in certain aspects starts to create that sponsorship relationship. 
uh, I've never necessarily had that conversation with any of my, what I would call them sponsors. And, and some of them are good friends now, but they took it upon themselves to be those people to ensure I had that. Um, it might be a great idea to actually change and have two programs now that we're talking about it, to, to actively um, pick those people for that advanced um, or accelerated career development um, in a sponsorship type program, which is kind of like hypo. Um, but just people in those positions, knowing that they do have that power, they may not realize it because they've always maybe had it um, and didn't realize how much weight them mentioning other people in the room could have. So uh, not sure if it's only going to be organic or only can be created by the organization, but there's probably somewhere in between those two things that it can kind of grow. And do you think your sponsors, were they doing it, as you say, whether when they started out as you know as a, your mentor and sort of became a bit more, do you think they did it just because they knew it's the right thing to do? Or, or do you know that you know, they were being sort of nudged from above that, you know, can you get alongside Emily or, you know, so-and-so and, and help them? Or as I say, was it just, you say, mentorships that blossomed into mm -hmm. something more, I guess? I I don't know. I've never asked them. Um, but I think there's probably some people who the organization would say work more closely with this person. But I do know specifically um, a lot of the people did um, are very passionate about diversity who were doing it in the first case and understood their position of power, how they could use it. I think it was more of them um, understanding and wanting to see change in an organization and taking it upon themselves um, in a more informal way um, in order to create it within the organization. Okay, and in terms of folks looking to get into the industry, whether, mm -hmm. you know, dare I say, as you did sort of almost by accident or whether they're, they're actively wanting to, is it possible for those do those same companies with that you know positive diversity culture do they actively sort of say to potential applicants you know this is us we want you know, actually want or is it more subtle that they as you said earlier you they just make sure they create sort of lists of potential you know applicants to balance it out or, or as i say if you're applying for a job should you expect someone to say yes we you know particularly delighted you're applying because you're you know female or you're in a minority whatever any thoughts as to that yeah I think when you're interviewing it's very dangerous because anybody can say anything it's really important to see actually what's there um particularly in the UK uh, I think if any company over a thousand people has to um report on their pay gap and positions where women are in terms of um their level uh, within the organization so I think doing some research to find out whether what they say, they might say they have an initiative, but aren't acting on it. As, as we all know that it's easy to say, it's, it's harder to do. What I would say is in interviews, it's really important not just to say explicitly, do you have a diversity policy? What does that look like? It's more important to say, tell me about a time that somebody got promoted. What did they do? What were they exhibiting? And trying to understand why they are promoting people, uh, how quickly they're promoting people, if they are. Um, trying to understand getting examples because an interview is just as much you interviewing the organization as they're interviewing you and getting your head around um, the culture is not so much as saying tell me about your culture but it's tell me a time that someone made a mistake how was that dealt with and trying to, to ask those types of scenarios starts to give more of a view of what the organization actually acts like and will show how they actually walk the walk than rather just when they're talking the talk, I think. Okay, and maybe just um, as we finish in terms of you know, what you've observed in the industry over the time you've been working in it, um, are there things that either still frustrate you and you think, well, I wish we could stop doing this or yeah. you know, a more positive light, wouldn't it be great if we could do this? So just any thoughts as to what, well, you know, obviously we've covered some ground and you've, you've mentioned some good stuff as to, you know, Things that could be done, but are, are there any sort of bugbears, if you like, that you think, wow, it'd be great to do this or let's stop doing this to, to help out? Yeah, I think um, looking at diversity and again, beyond just women, but yes, women are a, a big part of it because we're you know more than 50 percent of the population. So it'd be good to have a, a bit more equality there. But diversity of background and expanding that, because particularly as tech gets more and more involved in our lives, 
and, and is really guiding it, ensuring that we have multiple backgrounds for multiple points of view of how we're developing it is just so critically important. Um, so I think just not doing that again, as I mentioned, as a tick box exercise, but ensuring it actually is integral to your processes and how you're um, finding feedback and developing your products and ways of working. I just think it's so important. Um, and the other thing that I think would be great to see more and more of is pay transparency. And I think this is just across the board and it's not just for the gender pay gap, but an understanding of uh, even people who've been in organizations a long time and uh, they might be paying new um, joiners more and you can fall behind um, in that respect. So pay transparency and understanding benchmark data um, will help everybody regardless of background to have a fairer environment and understanding that they're treated fairly for the work they're doing. Um, I do think that in IT, there's a lot of people who've been in organizations for a long time and are completely loyal. And sometimes that doesn't work to their advantage in the end. Um, and I think that the more we have that, it just creates a fair, equal environment for everybody. Okay, that's great. Um, I mean, it's been fascinating to chat and you shared some lovely insights. So Emily, appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Thank you.